Secretary, question from the phone? Yes. Were you all able to um, connect with ACA to double check the numbers you've got in this report with ACA's Medicaid database? They apparently have a way of flagging children in state care within their system, and I'm wondering if you did that and, and if you have confidence in your numbers we, having done that. We, we are in the, in the, we have communicated with ACA. Uh, we are in the process of doing that validation. Uh, I feel comfortable, uh, you know, the only, the data you have in your database is only as good as the people putting the data in. Uh, I, I believe that we have uh, sufficiently raised a sense of urgency with our community partners. We've gotten full cooperation from them. I believe that this data is, uh, is reliable at this point in time. We will be validating it uh, through, through ACA. Have, having said that, in order to assure that that's the case and continues to be the case, we will provide this data uh, on a weekly basis, an updated weekly basis, on our, on our website uh, so that not only the public media but also the public uh, can review to see if there are any anomalies. We're also exploring a, a review of this data to see if there are reg flags that develop as it relates to specific physicians or specific medications. I've got another question from the phone, if you've got a minute. Yes. I wonder if it's possible to tell on this database if, you are, if kids are on more than one medication at a time or if you intend to start tracking that. Yes. Uh, as I understand it, and cor correct me if I'm wrong, as I understand it, uh, our database now can tell you whether it's one or more drugs and the actual drug that the in individual's on. Uh, Do you have that analysis from the database of how many of those 2,669 are on more than one drug concurrently? Uh, we have that. I do not have it at my fingertips, but uh, if you'll communicate with John Cooper, sure. uh, uh, he can provide it to you. And, and we can also, uh, you know, we, we can also give this in a way that it, uh, so since it's in an Excel spreadsheet, um, uh, that it can be analyzed independently of the department, and I think that's what's important. We, right. we, we will obviously be redacting, you know, children's names. Right, right. A question from the phone again, if I may? Yeah, and, and, and frankly, uh, if, if you could identify yourself, each of you, from the phone. Sure. So. Sure. That was Chris Huntley with the St. Pete Times. I have another question. I um, wanted to clarify the um, the summary sheet that you attached to that database said that uh, the report is based on children who have been identified as having a medication prescribed for psychotropic purposes. It is not based on the medication itself. I want to clarify that we've uh, ended once and for all any loophole um, that the medications do not have to be um, uh, tallied if they are psychotropic but not for psychotropic well, look, Chris let me it was it was extremely disconcerting to me when I heard that there was an old memo uh, uh, from somewhere in the department that indicated that um, uh, psychotherapeutic drugs used for non-therapeutic purposes didn't have to be reported that is not the statute that is not the law we have communicated directly with all of our community partners that a psychotherapeutic drug regardless of pur pur purpose uh, has to go through the same steps uh, that um, uh, a psychotherapeutic drug used for therapeutic purposes would uh, I don't want to I don't want there to be any doubt on the part of anybody uh, that that's the law and that's the policy of the department and if necessary I'll reiterate that again uh, to our community partners. Um, question Thank for the phone if I may? Yes. Uh, yes. Just one in, in, in the could, cases could, where it was discovered. Could, uh, where, if you could, could uh, you identify yourself? Yeah, no problem. This is uh, Jamal Abdulalim, uh, reporter at Youth Today okay. in, uh, Washington, in Washington, D.C. Thank you. And uh, I'm just wondering, in the cases where uh, it was discovered that there was no judicial consent or uh, p parental consent for drugs ever being administered. Are there any uh, penalties or discipline that's being imposed, whether on uh, case workers and supervisors or the agencies themselves? Are contracts being put on uh, review or probation or anything like that? Well, at this point, uh, you know, I, I want to get folks' cooperation getting this information in, uh, and I, I don't want to prejudge what any action that we might take in the future. 
uh, and and obviously we will we will look at that on a case by case basis. We will. Um, I've already quest requested that all of our contracts uh, include in our the overall departmental template a much more uh, definitive outline as to the protocols uh, and our expectations on the use of psychotherapeutic drugs. Uh, but uh, but I I I want to point out that. It's the department's responsibility to have communicated this effectively to case managers up to now. Uh, so I think the department has to take the responsibility uh, to make sure that that's done in the future uh, and so that we, um, so no case manager anywhere in Florida mis misperceives what their responsibility is, what data they're to collect, and how quickly they're to put it into the database. So it sounds like discipline and contract reviews are not out of the question. I don't want to lay anything out of the question at this point, but nor do I want to, nor do I want to leave the impression that that is an intention on our part. But I think, and again, um, the reason, and I think uh, Carol asked a very good question about the validation. Uh, that's something we need to do. Uh, but what I want to do is get information out there as quickly as possible, recognizing that this is a work in progress and that as we proceed, we'll both be looking at the Sewell work group uh, as well as some directions from, from uh, individual legislators involved uh, as to what future action we might, might take. So um, stay tuned. Another validation question real quick. Yeah. In Gabriel's case, um, as you all, as the record showed, the box indicating parental consent had been checked repeatedly by the caseworker. We now know that that never occurred. With regard to the, the figures you released today on consent, what validation do you have there that that simply a, a checked box or how, how reliable are the figures you have there now? We, we, we are doing an additional quality assurance review to assure that, that the information is reliable as it relates to that. But let me uh, refer to either Alan or John for any additional. This, this is Alan Abramowitz, Director of Family Safety. Um, what, what we're going to be doing, and, and we're actually uh, preparing, working with uh, Children's Mental Health under Bill James and, and uh, Children's Legal Services and Community-Based Care developing a quality assurance tool uh, specifically first for children five and under which we'll do every one of those cases uh, our goal is to do that within a week uh, and go through each case the quality assurance will also deal with the informed parental consent uh, we're also developing we're developing a tool for all children and we're starting that process uh, to go through and ensure that um, that we're uh, that all the issues involved in the statute are taken care of. So it's going to be in depth. But more important, from that uh, creation, um, it's going to become part of our quality management tool, and we're going to include those questions as we do quarterly quality assurance statewide so we can really uh, keep our finger on what's happening with psychotropic medication from a quality management point of view. It, it sounds like, though, with regard to this report, you did not dig deeper beneath the surface of of these records to ensure that what you have really is informed consent as opposed to say as in Gabriel's case a check box well let me let me let me take that I I, I, I question um, in in these cases as to what extent um, we can rely on the fact that this this is actual informed consent because that was was an issue uh, Carol as you know in in Gabriel's case but that, that is something that we, we are continuing to focus on. Uh, and I think Alan has laid out the process by which we're doing that. First on the 70, I think it's 72 or 74 kids under the age of six, uh, which is a significant concern to me. Uh, and then secondly, on those cases where we have neither parental consent or judicial court, court orders. But uh, do you have, uh, and I don't, don't hold Alan or John to this, but do you have any idea of the time frame on the quality assurance 